So this is courtesy of Resident Advisor. Ticket platform Dice buys Boiler Room, right? I couldn't think of two more um, interesting people to kind of link up in this sort of way, in it. But this is a deal which was confirmed by Resident Advisor by sources that both companies arrives after Dice recently secured 122 million venture capitalist investment. So they're making it seem like they purchased Boiler Room for 122 million, but I don't think they did. It's probably far less than this, but still, regardless. Um, UK-based ticketing merch and streaming platform Dice has acquired Boiler Room for an underscore sum. Um, confirmed to Resident Advisor by sources that both companies. The deal arrives as Dice. Um, in, moves into hosting ticket live streams of events really sources say that boiler room will return its full team retain its full team of staff and its london office Oof, hope they do didn't bear people get laid off anyway before that so this is not really that much of a thing to kind of oh am i not mistaken did i, did I read that somewhere that bear people got laid off and then they try to make it seem like they kept a lot of people i don't know but i do know that there was always a vacations vacate vacations vacations vac 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 vaccinations why can't i say that word um <laughs> I know there's always vacancy. That's the thing. No, I, I've missed it out. I know there's always vacancies at a place. I'd apply a couple of times here and there because I had some friends out working. They never really obviously worked out because they probably have thousands of people going through and, and applying. You know, you just imagine everyone that goes to the room and witnesses it. It's like, oh my God, I want to work there. So um, that was never a go, but they always had flipping, you know, vacancies there all the time. So who knows what's true and what's not, but um, it continues as the news comes only days after DICE announced it had secured a hundred and twenty two million in investment by Lead Capital SoftBank's Vision Fund Two. Um another of the investors in the future shape. Um the company run by former Apple executive Tom F Faddle, who co invented the iPhone. Faddle's also joined the board at DICE. DICE's founding um, came from SoftBank and Vision 2, launched in 2019 to event technology startup. It says, My experience when taking talking to Phil, the, the day of DICE was inspiring and immediately recognized how Boiler Room is and how much importance potentially has the Boiler Room founder Blaze Bluffers in the press conference. Oh, Blaze is balling out in it. If people hated Blaze already because they say he's a rich boy, comes from a privileged background, then he shouldn't be having that platform. Honestly, some of the rhetoric or some of the talk around Boiler Room on social is just weird, isn't it? Like, does it really matter if this guy's a Tory, if he's rich, if he's whatever? Like, does it matter really if he's been able to provide a platform that's essentially launched the careers of several people that I know of off offhand, right? Legitimately, that have kind of been able to take up DJing full time because of a sick set they had on Boiler Room that went viral for whatever reason. Like, does it matter? Like he's creating a platform that would have give that's given more chances to DJs than any other club that's ever existed in the history of London, especially. Right? We don't have flipping residency programs. Um people don't care for residents. They always they just want to see fucking Ricardo Villa Lobos play a fabric all the time, right? We don't really have a real good culture and people going to clubs and just trusting the programming of a club. It's changing a bit now. But in general, like how would you have gone from like a low tier, mid tier DJ to a kind of touring the world and having you know agents and having sponsorship how do you do that it's quite hard to do that in the uk it really really is difficult unless you make a track or whatever it's hard to do so the fact that he provided that platform that allowed people to see people find new space like for again i don't think i would have gone to robert johnson if it wasn't for resident advisor right them featuring robert johnson talking about how good it is and then me seeing the inside of it via Instead of it via a boiler room, or I might have seen like a Gerd Jansen and a Atta set back to back or something on a boiler room, and then I went to go visit it. Like these kind of things are super important. So I can only imagine how inadvertently they've put so much money into back into the economy. Now again, I know the funding, government grants and shit. It's a fin it's a it's a dodgy game. I understand. It's really it's really weird. I get it, but. I don't know, man. It feels like they've done they've done way more good than bad. I feel like I feel like they get a really bad rap on social. I don't know what people want from them. And again, if people gave Blaze a bad rap because they thought he was a posh rich kid, imagine now he's balling out of control, balling. Like <laughs> imagine how much he got for this. Maybe he's kept some shares as well, so in case they do go even bigger than what they are now at the moment. Because this is the thing too you have to imagine: the value of Boiler Room maybe increased more over lockdown, right? Because it felt like it was sort of dwindling, and it was kind of you know not going anywhere really fast. And then of course COVID happens; we're all locked in our homes again. And then guess what's back in vogue? Streaming and watching sets online. And then suddenly you know there was a period in time where Boiler Room were doing these things super naff. Don't get me wrong, where they were kind of having people play all around the world. At same, you know, like a stream, of course, you know, playing sets wherever they are because they obviously couldn't fly anybody in. And then they'd have kind of 
these scenes intersect with people maybe they're on zoom or whatnot dancing at home and raving in their bedrooms and shit like and, and it'll show the clips up on the screen bit cringe i understand but still people were lining up to be part of those things putting on their best outfits and really going for it indoors with the little lights and shit so clearly there was a kind of um a rekindling of the love of boiler room and people just kind of you know couldn't get enough of it so i'm sure that played a part and i'm sure these investment people don't look at those kind of things and these things were probably in the works from a long time ago but the value of that platform has definitely increased over this time 100 percent. and i'd imagine the same thing goes for dice the value of live ticketing and being able to go to these events has also increased people are being able to go out again so the connection and the kind of the deal is perfect for them at this kind of current time but I just would love to see what the people that hate Blaze and the lot are saying on social now because oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> the money is rolling in. It says um, it continues here. It says I believe deeply that the best way to boil room to evolve is by partnering with a company that values what we what we are today and provides the tools that we need to grow in the future. We play our strengths and they do theirs. Um, Dice's belief in empowering us, quote unquote but also allowing Boiler Room to remain our own independent entity. All this will enable us to move into a new era and be the best version of ourselves. Now, you have to be honest, mate. Blaze, that ain't going to happen. More likely than not, Dice are going to absorb you. They're going to strip away everything that makes that place special, especially even to work out or whatever they do. And it's just going to, you know, essentially... I wouldn't say die, but whatever magic it had before will eventually fizzle out. That's what happens to most companies that get acquired by other companies. Um, it's very unlikely that you get to keep your essence of what you are when somebody else is essentially um, paying for you, right? Or they, they're essentially your boss now because you are your own boss. Now that person is your boss because they paid you, you know, millions and millions of dollars. And, you know, you, you effectively have to answer to them in some way, shape or form. Effective, I'm sure the cultures aren't going to mesh because if anything, I've heard some very bad stories about Dice. I'm not too sure if the guy's still there, whoever founded it or not founded it. Again, allegedly, I don't know who it is. I don't know what your name is. I've just heard stories from, from, from people. Don't sue me and come after me. But supposedly that place isn't the best place to work at. Everyone leaves because management or people in certain places are, you know, C-U-N-T-S's, which is, makes complete sense considering the platform and what they kind of do. It's very unlikely you're not going to meet a couple of C-U-N-T-S when you're kind of working in those kind of places. But again, I'm not sure what it is like working in Boiler Room. I'm not sure what it's like working at Dice, but I'd imagine those cultures aren't going to mesh too well. You're going to have create some problems to get some places. But eventually, like I said, the real big winner out of this is definitely the founder. Blade is going to be balling out of control. So congrats to him. He cashed out, kept him moving. And then everyone else that's working there, just put your head down, make as much money as you can do. If you can move up a little bit, do your thing. But if you believe that it's going to stay the same and throughout, it's, it's a bit naive. Um, but in general, this might open up opportunities for DJs going forward. This might open up opportunities for musicians and loads of other things. Because, you know, Dice, if Dice is great at one thing, it is the kind of live music ticketing sort of side of things. So maybe that's where they're sort of using or they're trying to maybe segue their way that way into that kind of field. Because I'd imagine they're going to have a say in the programming. So a lot of the content you're going to see on Boiler Room is definitely going to change over the next few months and years coming forward. You're definitely going to see people that you wouldn't never expect to see on Boiler Room. You know, there might be a set by the killers and shit on there. Soccer, mommy. I don't know. Whatever. American football. I mean, you might see some really strange people on Boiler Room, but in general, you know, enjoy the time. Um, enjoy it for what it is. I guess it is what it is. And these platforms need to involve. They need to make some money. I don't begrudge any of them for doing this kind of thing. And again, um, yeah big big money I, i'd love to know what it is that they got invested in but again we're never going to find out on this coast fee actually we will find out people in people in dance music love to gossip so for sure someone will kind of report it um you know and say what the actual final figure is but they did say it was an undisclosed sum um right over here so who knows who knows who knows but again congratulations to both i guess you get to see what happens going forward with both companies hopefully it works out and you know as long as the consumer you and i win it shouldn't really be that much of an issue it shouldn't really be that much of an issue